into the living room and this is actually not a bad sized room again storage heaters everywhere we've got an old electric fire there delightful art deco fireplace that'll be coming out probably go for a wood burner like a stove of some description it's amazing to think that was almost two years ago. So much has happened since then. So folks, before we look at the final reveals of our self-build extension, we wanted to show you one more project and that was the installation of our wood burning stove. This is gonna be a big one, so we've split it into two parts. In this episode, we'll look at the installation, removing the old fireplace and the costs for the whole project. And next time we'll look at everything involved in running a wood burning stove, managing our wood supply, setting a fire and we'll answer the burning question, pardon the pun, how much will a stove save on your heating bills? We bought our crusty little house almost two years ago. It was a very typical drafty 1920s semi that was largely untouched from the day it was built. There was an electric fire but the ash from the last burn of the coal fire hadn't even been cleaned out. That sums up this property in a nutshell. In a hundred years since it was built the poor house has only been minimally maintained. As you've probably seen on earlier videos, we delicately stripped the property back to its bare bones, we fixed the drainage and all of the structural issues and then started bringing things up to modern standards. That included serious amounts of insulation. Knowing what was around the corner, we also wanted at least one emergency heat source that could utilise the vast amount of waste wood from the overgrown garden. That meant removing the solid concrete art deco fireplace and installing a modern high efficiency wood burning stove. Anyway, we set about removing the old concrete fire surround and stripping things back to the original builder's opening. You can get your fire installers to do all of this for you, but in our scenario it made sense for us to prepare a blank canvas ready for the install. Needless to say, if you don't know what you're doing here, make sure you get some professional advice. You don't want the chimney falling down. A good starting point is either your Hetas stove installer or a good chimney sweep. Both will have seen most scenarios and should be able to advise accordingly.
It's not entirely clear whether the Art Deco concrete monstrosity was original to the property. It's not in keeping with other period features, and the brick infill seemed very haphazard compared to the high quality brickwork of the house itself. We had various things to contend with, including the removal of the old back boiler. This was solidly embedded behind the original fire, and amazingly, it was still full of water. Judging by the age of the electric fire, it's probably been like that since the 1980s. The pipes were capped off, so this could have been incredibly dangerous had the original fire ever been lit again. Once everything was stripped back, we had the chimney swept. The chimney sweep said he'd never seen so much soot come out of one chimney, not to mention a multitude of bird's nests. The dust was biblical, but eventually we had a clean builder's opening ready for the installers. By the way, the builder's opening is also sometimes referred to as an ingle nook. So once we'd finished the strip out, this is what we handed over to the installers. A bare builder's opening ready for them to do their stuff. One of the first things they did was to install a new lintel a bit further down, just so that the opening wasn't quite as tall. It was only like one or two courses down, I think if I remember rightly, it was on just this course here, so there was only one layer of bricks to go above it. Don't hold me to that, they completed that section of work so quickly I didn't even get a chance to take a photo. I think they also had to strip out a few extra bricks from the stepped inside, kind of around here. Most of these bricks were missing anyway because of where the back boiler was installed. And obviously there was a new hearth to go in at the bottom. That kind of comes out like vaguely like that. They installed the new flue liner, which was frankly terrifying to watch. They also fitted a new chimney pot with bird guard and carried out a few remedial repairs to the actual chimney stack. They set the new slate hearth in place, boarded out the ingle nook with fireboard, dot and dabbed the entire chimney breast and cut the registration plate to size. Then on day two they did the skim plaster on the chimney breast, fitted the registration plate which you can't really see on this one, commissioned the actual stove and of course they completed all of the het ass registration as well. A few of my more keen viewers are probably wondering could you do this as a DIY job? I mean you could certainly do the hearth and the plastering and the boarding out and all that sort of thing. Personally, there's no way in a million years that I would get on top of the roof to feed down a nine meter, very awkward flue liner. Fitting the registration plate is a bit of a nightmare. And then you do still need to know what you're doing in terms of fitting the actual unit. Obviously you need to make sure everything is properly sealed so that like carbon monoxide isn't getting into your room. And ultimately the key thing is that it has to be het ass certified. Now I don't know if you can do a full DIY install and then get it certified afterwards. Let us know down in the comments below. Personally this isn't a job that I would want to do anyway. It would probably invalidate the stove warranty and ultimately if anything goes wrong with this I don't want it being on my head. 
so I personally don't advise doing this as a DIY job, but it's completely up to you, obviously. And here is the finished stove. We went for the Hawam Waking Mini 2. Sorry if I've mispronounced that. Hawam? Hawam. Anyway, it's a Danish manufacturer. Really, really nice stove. Very impressed with the build quality of it. And the heat this thing kicks out is incredible. I'm absolutely being toasted alive here. It's only four and a half kilowatts, but it comfortably heats the entire of our living room and kitchen diner, which is about 26 square meters. And it puts a lot of warmth into the rest of the house as well. More about that next time. It's a wood only stove, so only well seasoned wood. It's an Eco Design 2022 stove, A plus rated, 83% efficient, DEFRA and HETAS approved. I'll talk more about lighting the stove next time, but this particular design has both a manual and automatic air vent. So the little clicks that you can hear it making are the automatic vent opening and closing depending on how hot or cold the stove is. And just under here, it's too hot to touch at the minute, but just under here, there's a lever to manually control the airflow as well. But basically there's a heat sensitive spring inside it that opens up the primary airflow when the fire is cold and it gradually closes it as it gets warm. Really easy to use. You basically load it up, light it, let it get going for half an hour or so, and then just turn the manual airflow down a little bit. Here's what they recommend in terms of distances from combustible materials. And yes, the wood floor does get quite warm, certainly warm enough for the cats to have a good sploot. We were considering a fireproof rug in front of the hearth to be on the safe side, but so far that hasn't really been necessary. So in terms of costs, obviously there was my free labor for the initial rip out of the old fireplace. The chimney sweep was 55 pounds. The stove and materials were 1,964 pounds. That included the stove itself, which I believe retails around 1,500 pounds these days. The slate hearth, building materials such as the new lintel, plasterwork and all that sort of thing. The flue kit and registration plate, around nine meters of flexible flue liner, a bird guard and various minor chimney repairs. And then the labor for the installation was 850 pounds and that was basically two lads on site for pretty much two full days. So the whole project came in at 2,869 pounds, including VAT. So that covers pretty much everything about the installation. Next time, we're gonna look much more closely at the kind of day-to-day -day running of a wood-burning stove, because it's not for everyone. We'll look at wood storage and management, how to light the stove for a really efficient burn. We'll chat about why modern stoves are largely carbon neutral and not to believe everything that you read in the mainstream media. We'll look at some surprising things I found out when measuring emissions from a wood burner. And of course, we'll answer that number one question. How much does it cost to run this thing? And could it potentially replace your central heating system? Finally, it's that time of year again, unless you're watching this in future time, but the Gosforth Handyman Christmas jumpers are back on the Gosforth Handyman shop. They're very limited edition. There's only a few of this design left. And once these have gone, we're gonna be changing to a different design next year. So if you wanna try and build up the collection, then this is pretty much your last chance. If you're wondering about sizes and stuff like that, this is a medium that I'm wearing and it's a very comfortable fit on me. If you've got incredibly long arms, you might wanna go for the large, but there's a full range of sizes on the shop. We know everyone's watching the pennies at the moment, so we've kept the price the same, no hyperinflation here. And we've finally started shipping to the EU again, but you are gonna to have to cover your own like taxes and import fees because the EU changed some weird stuff a year or so ago and I've only just got a chance to look into it. But yes, we're shipping to the EU again, but it might get held up at customs until you've paid import duties. Sorry, that is completely out of our control. If you get stuff ordered this week, we'll do our utmost best to get everything sent out as quickly as possible. So you should get it all in time for Christmas. I am so unbelievably hot at the moment. Anyway, you can find everything at gosforthandyman.com shop. And if you're looking for Christmas present ideas for your better half, 
Why not get them a membership on the Gosforth Handyman Member Zone? You can get access to a whole load of extra videos that aren't available on YouTube. You can chat to me directly via the forum and in the article comments on there. No idea what my hand's doing. 20 quid for a full year silver membership or 50 quid for a gold membership if you want your name to appear in the credits at the end of the videos. I'm not sure what side of the screen they're gonna appear on. Probably over my face. We might have to put the prices up on the member zone next year because our costs are going up, unfortunately. So if you buy a membership now, you'll be able to lock it in at the current price. Bonus. Just remember, if you don't want your other half's name to appear in the end credits of the video until after Santa's been, drop me a note via the contact thing on the member zone and let me know. For now, loads more to come. Obviously, we've got the part two of this. We've got all the reveals of the extension project as well. So don't forget to hit subscribe. For now, folks, as per usual, look after each other, be nice to each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.